Free is our favorite word. Like free samples. Yum. Joy. Thank you. At Morgan & Morgan, our fee is free. You don't pay anything unless we win your case. True samples? Injured? Call Morgan & Morgan. ForThePeople.com Good afternoon again. Let me acknowledge right off the bat, typically a green necktie is a safe choice for the SEC commissioner. I looked down and I looked at the schedule and realized Kentucky Blue is embedded in the green necktie. So I might as well get it out there because I know somebody will send me a text or an email on that. Uh, and that's okay because Mark Stoops is entering his 10th season as the head coach at the University of Kentucky. Kentucky has now played in six consecutive bowl games under Mark's leadership, surpassing the previous school record of five. In addition to an overly exciting fourth quarter comeback win against Iowa, uh, his alma mater, in the Citrus Bowl, uh, that win gave Kentucky a school record four straight bowl wins. In 2020, uh, Kentucky was one of our unranked teams in a 10-win COVID or 10-game conference schedule COVID season, who went into bowl games and defeated ranked teams from other conferences. They finished at Kentucky the 2022 season with a 10 and 3 record. In keeping with the tradition of Kentucky, Mark Stoops is a majority owner of a bourbon distillery. A facility makes William Tarr bourbon. There are no samplings, so I heard the disappointment and the groans in the room while it was mentioned with no sampling. Big sales this spring when it produced a special edition com commemorating Kentucky's Citrus Bowl Championship. And while it's been a while, since Mark's college days, I understand he can still show some athletic ability between playing golf, most importantly showing a, a very smooth and effective basketball junk, jump shot during summer outings, either with or against his basketball players, if you understand the competitive, or his football players. If you understand the competitive spirit, I'm sure it's against because uh, that's competition. And I'm proud to introduce the University of Kentucky head football coach, Mark Stoops. Thank you, Greg. I always appreciate you, your staff, uh, for the support you give us this year and each and every year, and really appreciate you giving me a plug to the bourbon. I'll make sure I send a a case to the commissioner's office for all you fellas uh, to sip on, preferably on a, on a Sunday if we get a bad call. And uh, we have a few choice words, I'll send that over for you, sip on on Sunday afternoon. But uh, no, seriously, appreciate Greg, his staff, first class event, everything they do in the SEC is always first class and really appreciate him uh, in, in what he does for us. I'd also like to recognize my administration at Kentucky. Dr. Capilouto, our president, Mitch Barnhart, our athletic director, um, they provide great leadership, great support, and it's really fortunate for myself and very rare. Uh, we've worked together for 10 years, and uh, you don't see that a lot uh, with that kind of stability, and it, it, it really helps, so I uh, appreciate them. Uh, thank you to you guys. I know you, you sit here and, and uh, I listened to about a half hour of it yesterday, and I don't know how you do it, but uh, you put up with that for, for three, four days. And, and, uh, but uh, we do thank you for what you do, the time you spend promoting our sport. And really what's really important is the time you spend promoting and helping our student athletes and getting their stories out there. And with that being said, you know, we have three individuals today and they always have, you know, they have three really unique stories, but they're great individuals, and I and, uh, can't wait for you to spend a little time with them today and get to know them. Uh, DeAndre Square, a linebacker, a six-year senior, a guy that uh, has just been a mainstay for us. You know, you know, just a little quick tidbit on him. Last year in the bowl game that Greg just mentioned, we were fortunate to come away with a victory. We were down. We were down. COVID guys were injured and all that, but nobody cares. But uh, but DeAndre was ruled out. And bottom line is, is he knew he had to go in. Went in the game, limping around, gets the game ceiling interception that perver you know preserves the the victory for us. But uh, that tells you a little bit about DeAndre and the leadership that he has. Kenneth Horsey, 
another unique story, a guy uh, that was named, and again, thanks to some of your stories, uh, college football comeback player of the year, he had a very serious uh, heart surgery when he was a senior in high school and overcame that. Uh, so Kenneth is here with us, an offensive lineman from Florida. And then, of course, Will Levis and his story in uh, uh, the transfer coming in from Penn State, uh, but having such a big impact in our program. Uh, led us to 10 victories a year ago, came back, and uh, so excited about Will. Not only a, a great player and super talented, but unbelievable leader, uh, as the other two gentlemen are I as well. So I uh, look forward to you guys spending some time with them. But I don't know if there's ever been a more volatile, uncertain, and ever-changing period within college athletics. And much of this, we have very little or no control over uh, as a head coach. And you can imagine uh, that leads to some interesting times for us. However, uh, when everything is swirling and changing in the outside world and outside of our building, I think it's more important more than ever to have that stability within our program. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, going into year 10, I feel very fortunate to be here and be at these media days for the 10th time and, and to have the support of our administration. But those roots, uh, that we've planted, those roots that we've grown, the stability that we've had uh, for these uh, past nine years going on 10 uh, has to help us uh, during these turbulent times. And just like anything, um, you know, we will always uh, grow, adapt, and overcome to, to any situation. And, um, you know, with the support of the administration and the support we have within this league, uh, you know, Kentucky will get through it, and, and of course, uh, all, all the SEC will. Um, you know, you've heard me talk about it and how we're going to do that, but you know, each and every year I talk about it with build, select, and develop. That's what we are. We may change the narrative, change how we do it, uh, different tactics each year, but bottom line is continue to build that attitude. Continue to, to, to build the culture that we're looking for at Kentucky extremely important uh, in this day and age. Um, it goes with the next point, you know, selecting the right players, recruiting. Uh, again, never more important. Uh, turbulent times, uh, different times right now with uh, maybe, uh, you know, I didn't want to get into all that, but the, you know, money grabs or recruiting or relationships, but selection is extremely important. Uh, and then the last piece and, and always will be extremely prominent at Kentucky, as long as I'm the head coach, is the development piece. And, and we are super active and motivated uh, to develop these young men in, in all areas of their life. And uh, we've been very successful at that, and we need to continue to do that. That's who we are. Um, the staff, I'm very excited about our staff. Um, made a change a year ago, really had great success. Liam Cohen came in. Cohen came in, was our offensive coordinator, changed us from that you know, ground and pound, physical running uh, style, creating some shots down the field. Happy for, for Liam as he moved on and became a coordinator in the NFL uh, with the Super Bowl champs. But uh, with his success and with, with Will Levis and the success we had with him, we were able to attract a, a, a guy like Rich Gangrello uh, from the 49ers and uh, could not be more thrilled uh, to add Rich uh, to our staff. Uh, Two fronts. It keeps the continuity, even though it's a different coordinator, uh, understands the terminology and the scheme and can keep a lot of the things we did well a year ago, keep that consistency, keep that continuity as well as anybody I could have hired. And the second front is, is a guy that is a true quarterback guy that has been an offensive play caller in the NFL, been a quarterback coach in the NFL and, and highly regarded quarterback coach to help a young man like Will. Uh, take it to the next level. And certainly, you know, when you look at a guy like Will, uh, could have certainly came out a year ago, but like any player that wants to, to be the very best, is highly motivated to take his game to the next level. And we're blessed to have a guy like Rich uh, to work with him. Um, on the defensive side of the ball and the coordinator, Brad White coming back. Uh, highly sought after, um, you know, seems to always have uh, offers, but he's been very loyal. And I love keeping the consistency with what we're doing defensively and having Brad back, along with the assistants, obviously, on both sides of the ball. 
and the third coordinator, the recruiting coordinator, Vince Morrow, he's been with me uh, since day one and uh, really helps uh, on the recruiting front. And uh, he and I have had the same vision since day one. And, and uh, so keeping those three guys is, is uh, extremely important and uh, greatly appreciate our staff. So, um, you know, as I mentioned, I touched on Will a little bit offensively, um, but just excited, excited about where we can go. Um, uh, we're always going to be a team that's going to be physical, that could pound the football. But where we are falling short a couple years ago, we, we got better a year ago. and want to continue to build on that is with the success of the running game is pushing the ball down the field. And when you got a quarterback like this, uh, there's not a throw he can't make. Uh, so uh, very excited to build on that and continue to grow. Our kicking game uh, will be very solid. We have all, all, all guys back. We're actually too deep. Uh, at kicker and at punter in uh, long snapper, so I uh, feel good in that area. So all players have worked hard, had a great summer, uh, been relatively quiet, so excited about that. And uh, the guys are hard at work, and uh, we are eager to get rolling. So uh, with that, I will open it up for questions. Thank you, Coach. If you have a question, please raise your hand. Allie, Lexi, and Blake will get a microphone to you. Please stand if you're able and state your name and affiliation. Coach, we're going to start in the section in front of you here, about midway back. Hold on just a second. We'll get the volume turned up for you. All right, let's, let's go back down. Let's go ahead and go down here first, Bob. I could hear you, Bob. Go ahead, Bob. Good, buddy. How are you? Thanks, Bob. Bob's making me feel old, telling me I'm the first coach <laughs> in Kentucky history to make it 10 years, and then uh, asked about uh, how I felt about um, tying Bear Bryant's record with the first victory of the year and breaking it with the second. And, uh, you know, I really don't spend much time thinking about that. The, the, the 10 years in Lexington is something that I am proud of because I know how difficult it is. I know how difficult it is to walk into this league with the great coaching, uh, with the recruiting, and starting you know, like six feet below 14, and then trying to climb that ladder as high as we can. Uh, I am proud of that, and I, I appreciate the work. However, we're not satisfied. You want to continue to grow. We want to continue to push it. Obviously, some teams at the top of the food chain in, in the East and the West are doing some really special things. So you have to continue to elevate your game. However, I have no control over anybody else just of what we can do at Kentucky. So that's my focus. That's the energy to continue to grow in that area. Um, with, the, with the record and all that, I appreciate you bringing it up, but it, it's not a time to really reflect on that too much. Um, I, I do, you know, Honestly, just personally think about my mother, you know, because uh, I want to I want her to be there and for her to have two sons that have the all time, uh, you know, wins at, at, at power five programs with Bob at Oklahoma and myself at Kentucky. Um, that's really the, the only focus that I have is on my mother to, to be able to be there and share in that moment. OK, we'll try it back over here again on your side. Hey, coach, Andrew Stefaniak, Auburn Daily. You all have been doing a really good job on the recruiting trail, and it seems like you all are keeping some Kentucky kids in state lines, and I just wanted to hear your thoughts on that. Always a primary focus, you know, staying within a six-hour radius, and uh, Kentucky is home base for us, and obviously some of southern Ohio we've had great success in as well. But um, as we get better, as we win more and, and our brand expands a little bit, we're able to branch out a little more than, than we have been in the past. Uh, but that's always a, a focus for us. Hey Coach, we're going to go straight in front of me here, three rows back. Yes, uh, Coach Stoops, Drew DeArmond, WZZN Radio, Huntsville, Alabama. I wanted to ask you about a couple of newcomers to your program. 
one young man I was able to personally uh, watch and then interview that you signed was from Pearl Cone High School in Nashville, Barry and Brown. I wanted, I think he could add an explosive element to your offense. And I also wanted to ask about a transfer portal addition that I had a chance to cover uh, in high school. He was a late bloomer in football. He only played two years, but D Beckwith from Tennessee, what kind of role do you kind of envision for him as a jumbo athlete? Yeah, um, two different guys with Barry on just has all the tools. Uh, super excited about him. Was just talking with Will on the plane on the way down here, discussing a little bit, and 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 Will mentioned it right away how special uh, Barry on is with with the ball in his hands and uh, can do some special things and has a lot of juice. So we really got to get him caught up. He just got on campus, you know, a couple weeks ago, and so need to get him plugged in and uh, get the ball in his hands because he's he's uh, he's a total playmaker, and we're very excited about that. And then with D, he is a he is a, a large athlete. He's a big boy, and uh, he's a guy that uh, can confuse you at times because he can play so many different positions. Uh, but that's the nice thing. That's what uh, that's what Rich really liked about him, and we liked about him as a staff was that we could be very multiple with him. And Rich, if you watched the 49ers in the past and some of the creativity and some different things we could use with a big guy like that that could play wide out, he could play some. H back, just different things. So we'll move him around. Coach, we'll go right in front of you, about five rows back on the near aisle. Uh, Alan Cole, Gamecock Scoop. Uh, going back to the ten-year thing, there's so many new coaches in the league. Two more this year. There's two second-year guys in your division with Beamer and Heupel. What do you think the key is to being able to sustain success this long in the SEC, if anything? I'm not sure. You know, I could control. You know, or answer for for other programs. I mean, I just really looked at what we did, and that's you know, continue to stay the course, and you know, uh, adapt and adjust when you can. You know, I think uh, all of us. You know, you're going to be accused of being hard-headed at times. You're going to be accused. You know, you, you you can't just you know you you have to stay to your core beliefs is the only advice I could give anybody. And I'm, I don't, they, those two don't need my advice. They're doing very well, but, uh, just any, any coach, you know, it's, it's, uh, um, you know, just be authentic. You know, to me, it's just being authentic, staying true to who I am. Well, you know, my core beliefs, what I know is right, but then also adjusting in, in adapting when you have to, because, uh, for the longevity, uh, you, you, you have to, you have to adapt and overcome any situation. Coach, we'll go over to our right, about four rows midway in the row. Coach uh, Ike Jones with the War Report. Uh, you talked about the turbulent nature of college athletics right now. And uh, can you express some of the concerns that you feel like you have around NIL and some of the things that are particular challenges that you've had? I think some of your recent comments talking about a lot of this might undo some of the work that you've put in um, currently. Well, uh the, the, there's so much good. It's it's a complex issue, and there's a lot of smart people that are trying to to, to work it out. I think um, there's a lot of good to it, with the players that are here with me that help build the brand of Kentucky football and benefiting from name, image, and likeness. I think we all support that, and uh, you know want that to be a part of it. But I think there's also concern. I haven't listened to everybody's comments, but I know I've been in meetings, and I think everybody's concerned. Uh, in, in the SEC as a head coach with, with uh, you know, pay for play, so to speak, in collectives and paying players out of high school and all that. I think we're all a little bit concerned about the sustainability of that and the future of that. I think that's where the concern comes in. You know, what, what is pay for play and what's legal? We're going to stay in the same section in the middle. Go ahead. Coach Lance Dahl with Locked On Kentucky. You've got some new faces in the receiver room. One of them you mentioned just a little bit ago. Does the youth in the core cause any concern in relation to the passing game and its progression under Will, uh, Will uh, Levis? Yeah, it, it definitely does. We have some guys that we have to push. We're fortunate. You know, one of the young guys came in in the spring, so we had an opportunity to watch him all winter and through spring practice in Dane Key. And he's a special young man and uh, definitely an impact player. And you could see right away he has the mindset that he could pick things up. Um, and then Travion Robinson bringing him in as a transfer from Virginia Tech that has a lot of experience. We needed that as well. And then we feel like we have young guys, guys like Christian Lewis that were out there last year. Um, Demarcus Harris has been waiting for his role. We really feel like he's going to have a big year. So we, we feel like the, as, a, as a group, we're probably as talented as we've been in a long time. But there definitely is some youth there that we've got a lot of work to do. 
Okay, we're going to stay right next door, the same spot. Conor O'Gara, Saturday Down South. Uh, Sinky said that you have a, a hoops game. Do you model your game after anybody specific, maybe a former Kentucky player or anything like that? <laughs> no, no. No, he caught me one time i had to promote it a little bit i had to i had to brag because the 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 we always have a we have a cookout on every wednesday uh, during the summer because i don't like to get too disconnected from the players so what we do is uh you know is, is the coaches if they're on vacation they're gone they're fine they take their time but if they're in town we all get together on wednesdays and we get behind the grill and actually cook don't cater it in but coaches cook and do things and then we play a bunch of backyard games and have some fun well, that day, they took some snapshots of the, of the horse game, and I happened to win. So I bragged about it, and then I quit playing. They, <laughs> they tried to get me the next week, but I know better than that. I got, I got fortunate one day and beat some talented guys, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to retire that for the summer. All right, Coach, we'll go over here to our left on the aisle. Rob Brown, Sideline Sports Memphis. You're from one of the iconic football towns in America, Youngstown. I don't know what it is, the water, something, but it's special. You ever thought about the 10 years you've been at Kentucky? The fans are getting as angry about losing a football game as they do in basketball. That's a big deal, and that's led to a lot more money probably coming into the program. You ever think about that? Because uh, it's changed a lot. Two 10-win seasons the last four years. What's, your, what's the limit? Um, I, I don't think about uh, the first part of your question. I really control the things I control and, and uh, very passionate about building a, a, a program that people want to come watch, uh, you know, both locally and nationally. And, um, you know, so, you know, that's what, what my focus is. And what the next step is, 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 is just, you know, again, continue to build on the good things we're doing. Stay consistent with what the, the good is. And where we're falling short, address them and try to get better. We're, we've addressed some issues we're gaining in certain areas, and we're going to continue to do that. Coach, we're going to go right down the center aisle on the near aisle. Mike. Uh, yep, Mike Griffith, uh, AJC Dog Nation. Coach, uh, in the east, obviously, Georgia has enjoyed a lot of success. Uh, Kentucky seemingly built similar, uh, balanced, uh, strong run game on offense, very sound defense. Um, how do you out Georgia, Georgia to pass the dogs in the East? And then secondly, how important was that 22 play 75 yard touchdown drive? I know there was four seconds left. Some fans had left the stadium, but what did that mean to your program to punch that final play in? It look, looked like a war of wills between you and Kirby there. Well, that part of it, I'm going to address that first. Uh, it definitely was just, just playing the game. Everybody knew if you played Georgia last year, what they were all about how good they were. And so, you know, at that point, you know, maybe the, the game was over as far as who was going to win and who was going to lose. However, our players need to continue to fight. They need to compete. We're into no moral victories, but we're into getting better. And when you're playing, what, the very best or one of the best, probably the best defense in the nation last year, and you're competing and you're moving the football, you're trying to get better. You're trying to improve. You're trying to learn what it's like to play the very best in the country. And that's what we did in, uh, you know, in that, that particular drive. But that was one drive. Um, but uh, you know, after that, I really hadn't put much thought into it until you just asked. But how do you gain on Georgia? I, I mean, I can't answer that. I just saw Kirby up there. I could maybe try to whack his knees out or something, knock him out for a minute. But, uh, but um, no, he's done a great job. I mean, I got a lot of respect for Kirby, the way they coach, the way they recruit, the way everything they're doing in, in the program. They're doing things right. I, I got to worry about us and how do I make us better? We had an opportunity a few years ago to play them for, for whoever won that game, they essentially won the shot at the East, and, and they took care of business. And hopefully the next time we're in that situation, we're more prepared. That's the way I've always approached it with us. You know, when we started at 14 and worked our way up, last year we were fortunate enough to finish second in the East. However, I think we all know there was a large gap between uh, Georgia and, and number two, and we're all trying to close that gap. We're going to go back down to Bob, and we're going to turn up the volume this time. Bob? Okay, yeah, that works. That's cool. <laughs> um, and two part you, you just wanted to get on TV. Yeah, again, yeah. Mom. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got it. such a face for TV. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I had a two-parter. Two you, you, your brother's wor working on your staff now, and I guess yes. that's flipped from, I guess, Arizona. wonder what that dynamic was like. And then with Will, has he been 
uh, even better than maybe you imagined when he transferred? What, what's he brought to the program? What, what makes him a real good quarterback? Yeah, the first part of that, you are correct. I worked with Mike um, in, and learned an awful lot of football. I was uh, at the, the Miami, the Hurricanes at the time, and we were winning a bunch of football games at Miami. And then I went with Mike to be his defense coordinator at Arizona. I'm very proud of the work. I saw Mike uh, take a program that was very similar to what I inherited. So I, that's why when I say I very clearly knew what I was getting into when I stepped on campus at Kentucky. Um, and Mike took over a very similar situation, and I was very proud of the work we did there. When I left uh, the last year I played there, or coached there, we, we were one play away from playing in the Rose Bowl. And they've never you know, played in the Rose Bowl in the history. And, um, and Mike did some really good things there. And um, we lost in double overtime to, to, to Oregon. I was just talking about that up on one of the media or one of the radio shows, and they were chuckling how you don't ever forget those plays, and I'll never forget it. You know, we had two fourth down stops to beat Oregon, and we're playing in the Rose Bowl. And um, so, yeah, I worked with Mike and really learned a lot of football, learned a lot about building a program, and was very proud of the work that we did at Arizona. And now he's working with me. I needed a guy with a great experience. You know, you know, Brad White does a tremendous job and I have great assistance on my staff, but I always look for uh, great big picture guys as well. You know, you need more than one. You need, you, need, you need coordinator minds. You need multiple coordinator minds on both sides of the ball. And then with Will, you asked me if he exceeded expectations. I, I, I think that could be fair. I knew what he was capable of, but what he's done, I, I'm not going to lie. When I watch him at times, I mean, I, it, it's really, it, it does kind of blow you away. You know, you just watch him and warm, but you watch maybe on a windy day and there's guts coming at you. And the way he rips the football, the way he throws it, the way he works, everything about him, uh, he's exceptional. He's exceptional. He did, he did, you know, I don't worry about him and talking about him like that because he's very self-driven. He's, he's worried about getting better. He works his tail off every day. And all you got to do is watch the way he plays the game. If you put on a film and watch the way he plays the game, you have to respect that because he cares. He cares about winning. He cares about competing. He'll do whatever is necessary to put the team on his back and to carry him to victory. And uh, you, you guys can respond to people like that. And, you know, his talent kind of speaks for itself. But he has all the intangibles uh, to be a franchise guy, you know, at the next level. I, I know he is with us. And uh, he's a special player. Okay, we have time for one more. We're going to go over here to the right alongside the far aisle. Hey, Coach. Uh, Steve Moulton, WZZN from Huntsville, Alabama. What is the biggest question mark you have about this team heading into fall drills? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I think it was brought up. I think, you know, we have to have some playmakers step up at the wide receiver position because we have a, a beast of a quarterback. You know, we have to get some playmakers to, to step up and compete. And we're going to have to depend on a few younger guys there. And the older guys need to continue to step up. And then, you know, just consistency. You know, uh, anything that we've done, you know, well in the past doesn't mean it automatically carries over. We have to go out and prove it. We have to earn it. We have to stay hungry and, uh, you know, compete our tail off to take it to another level. All right, Coach Stoops, thank you for your time today. Thank you all very much. Appreciate you.